And the other, the other point I just wanted to interject was you, you kind of said it in passing. You said, you know, you're talking about the 1 to 10 leverage. And you're saying, so that's, for example, for the example we did with 5 million to 50 million. 50 million in your community. And I just want to help people to understand or to try to grasp the idea of having $50 million, which is actually small when we're right. talking about the kind of resources we do have as right. Native Hawaiians, um, in the community, being driven by Native Hawaiian voice, meaning suddenly if we don't want a hotel monopolizing our beautiful pristine beach, we don't have to That's support right. a hotel monopolizing our beautiful pristine beach. We can use that money to encourage our farmers or encourage lo'i development or encourage local ia so we have fishing no. or fish available for the communities nearby. So we can take hold of the responsibility and we can shape the economic future of our aina. I mean, that's what it's all about. And, that, and that's, that's one, you know, of course, important uh, Avenue, but you know, as as when Manu is talking about uh, uh, the ten to one leverage, five coming fifty. In reality, if if OHA has three hundred million dollars in First Hawaiian Bank, you times that by ten. <laughs> if Kamehameha Schools, which has seven billion dollars, has those seven billion dollars in banks in Hawaii. Mm -hmm figure that out. There's 70 billion dollars. Now there's no reason for Hawaiians to have homeless, houseless, uh, houseless problems, let alone uh, you know four to five families with three to four kids in one house on Hawaiian home state land. Aye. You know there's no reason for those things and you know when it comes to development imagine now I'm talking about seven to ten billion dollars times ten that could eventually and not immediately, but eventually become ours to manage. You know, not we, we're talking about, we're talking, what Manu is talking about is the social conditions and, and health and housing and education, employment, small business loans, mortgages, but even development loans. You know, banks let out monies to these developers that come to Hawaii and develop. And they would have to come to our bank too to find and get better interest Absolutely. rates. Absolutely. That's right. So, the banks know this, and it, at some point in time, um, you know, I used to think sovereignty and the political status and all, all of the things that happened to us in that uh, arena was the most utmost or, or the utmost importance. And now I believe that um, we've learned enough. Um, maybe that's something that we should set aside until we can figure out the, the most um, free, fair, and impartial process for that particular avenue. But we got to watch the money um, because everybody else knows. I, I think um, you know, at times I think to myself, well, wow, isn't this criminal? If I hire somebody, say I was you know, part of this organization and I hire this, this institution, financial institution to uh, handle my investments, and yet the best thing for the investments was to create one that we would, we would be doing, mm -hmm. you know. You know, whatever, fine, <laughs> we, should, we should have been told that, hey, you know what, Hawaiians, you guys got all this money, why don't you guys just open your own bank? Well, there's a reason they didn't <laughs> tell us that, and we yeah. know that now, you know, it's all like just becoming aware, right, yeah. being educated. You were talking about your, your run for the OHA seat, um, right. you are going through a four-point process of the things that you're supporting covered political, economic, and social. Um, I don't want us to run out of time okay. without you talking okay. about the, your final point, which was culture. Culture. And how that fits into the ideas that you have as an OHA candidate. Well, the one, one thing, and probably the only thing that I see any type of resurgence is in our cultural uh, area, cultural programs, projects, and but, but still, it's still missing, you know, um, you know, I brought up cultural sensitivity because one of my kupuna brought that up. And I asked her, Auntie, what do you think about uh, OHA's stance on cultural situations, desecration, the arts, and all that? And she straight out told me that there's no cultural sensitivity over there. And I was like, oh, man. Mm -hmm. And 
and she's she's well known, and um, and she's uh, she's supporting me. She's been very uh, very um, enlightened about the bank situation too. Right. You know, another one said it was like said, Auntie, you gotta help me with this part now. You know, I need to know where you guys coming from, where we our culture. I'm not a cultural expert. I'm not an expert in any of any one of these points, but I know how it works. It's kind of like what I do as a trade. You know, I do bioenergy work on people, trying to get them in balance and harmony with, right, you know. Right. And so this is the same thing, you mm -hmm. know, trying to get our balance and harmony uh, in every area of our lives. 